Okay, so I was going through the first chapter of our history book, The Rise of Nationalism in Europe, and I began to read the first page of that chapter. And what? Yes, the first page itself is very boring. Now, what will happen in reading the whole chapter, right? So that is why I'm gonna present you this in a very interesting and in a very easy manner, right? So now let's begin. Well, I forgot you to welcome. So welcome everyone to my channel. This is Divyansh, and you are watching Learnium, where we learn and discuss with a lot of fun. Now let's begin. Okay, so there was one French artist, Frederick Sorry. He made one print in 1848. And oh wait, 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 before I continue, you know what I just gave you, you know, is a lot of information with full of facts. And you are going like, hey, we have to remember all these things. Because you know there is very high probability of such questions to come in exam. So you are going like we have to remember all these things. Well, at the beginning only, I would like to request all of you that please don't do this. Yes, no, you can just relax and listen to this as a story. Because in the previous video, I have just told you that why we are learning about our history or about our past. Just because, so that we can learn from our mistakes. So don't just go on remembering all these things. At the end, by the way, I will give you the chance if you want to remember all those things. Okay? So just relax and listen to this as a story. Now, let's continue. Okay, so once upon a time, there was one man who lived in a country which we today call as France. So, he was calmly sleeping, completely lost in his dream. By the way, we don't know the day, but this was definitely one among the 365 days of the year 1848. So, he was calmly sleeping, completely lost in his dream and suddenly he wakes up and he directly goes to the place where all his paints and colors and brushes all these things were kept and he started drawing he started making a drawing and this was his outcome yes hmm so once we are done with all this rubbish so this was the actual painting that you can see on your screen So from this painting, what we can actually see? Yes, we can see all kinds of people over there. Men, women, children, and aged person, all kinds of person or all kinds of people. And they are, you know, marching in a long train. What does this mean? You know, marching in a long train. It means that, you know, they all are doing one revolution. Well, these people, you know, they are from different, different countries. And we can recognize them from their flags right so it means that in every country of europe you know revolution is going on and men and women and everyone is involved in this revolution okay now after that we can see one statue over there so can you tell me that which statue is this okay so if you remember that during the french revolution the people imagined or they personified the liberty as a female figure. Well, liberty simply means that freedom. Well, definitely liberty has much profound meaning. But for right now, liberty means freedom. Very simple. Okay. So, okay. So this is do you know section that we usually get in a box in our textbooks. So, so do you know that the Statue of Liberty, which is in New York, or in USA so that was actually a gift to USA from the France yes a gift to USA from France and you may go and check few more things about this 
so how we can take this as you know we have one finishing line by the way we don't know which is the starting point but we know the final point which is that statue of liberty which means freedom okay so as we can see here the torch of enlightenment she bears in one hand and the charter of rights of man in the other so from this print the artist frederick soryu is actually trying to tell us that uh, you know all the people from europe they are actually moving towards the statue of liberty or moving towards freedom yes so there we have a statue of liberty and people from different different areas are moving towards that statue right and some countries have passed that statue what it means yes they have got freedom and freedom from yes freedom from kings right so from kings they have got the rule of people they have become the nation right so some people have passed the statue some people have reached the statue and other people are slowly moving towards that statue so by that time and we are talking about the year 1848 you know when frederick soryu you know had this dream okay so uh, by that time usa and switzerland you no know, they had already passed that statue of liberty what it means yes they have become nations so in the list of those few countries which used to exist at that time you know two among them was usa and switzerland okay after that we have france you know we can again recognize its people or its citizen from its flag okay now france has just reached the statue of liberty right so it has just reached the statue of liberty and after that we also have germany and austria and you can also read few more things about this if you want to from page number 4 of your history book by the way for right now this all these things are enough okay now once we are done with uh, all these countries now we can look at the ground okay so look carefully what we can see yes we can see the shattered remains of the symbols of the absolutist institution you know we can just see some of the broken crowns of the kings so what it simply means is that you know we have kings and we are telling them hey kings you know you get lost because now your rule has gone now the rule of people have came so now you may just get lost from here okay so that's what it means okay well i use one new term you know absolutist so what is this so this is very simple so absolutist is a government or it is a system of rule in which there is no restraints on the power exercised it means that there is no limit on the power of that government or that system of rule and in history we also refer to this as you know monarchical government you can relate to this with hitler you know adolf hitler so i hope that now it has become very clear to all of you so it refers to the form of monarchical government that was centralized militarized and repressive so they are the central power the military is under control and also they are repressive so it means that if i am a king i can bring any citizen i can make him do work 14 hours a day and after that if i want i may not give anything to that person so this is nothing but repression and if they don't do the work which i am telling them then i can give them some severe punishments right so you know all the citizens they are afraid of the king because they have because the king is very repressive so now i hope that this is very clear to all of you now after this there also one utopian vision by the way this is also the vision of frederick soryu so in that it is written that this is a type of society which is so ideal that it is impossible to exist well it simply means that we're going to have a society in which we actually don't even need the government you know everyone's going to do their duty properly everyone will help each other and no corruption no cheating all these things well 
today what we see is completely different of these things so that is why they have written that it is impossible well what do you think is it really impossible well i don't know about the other countries but in india it is definitely possible because you know it has been continuing from ancient times right so what do you think about this let me know in the comment box below is it possible or not okay so let me know in the comment box below okay now after that we can move towards the sky and what we can see over there yes some saints and the christ and some angels right by the way the artists have used them as a symbol of fraternity well now what is fraternity so now let's just google it right so what is fraternity okay so i got it so it is the feeling of friendship and support between the people in the same group well you know this is all rubbish it simply means this okay okay so this was all about the print that frederick sorry you made okay now we're going to talk about the 19th century well 19th century is from you know 1800 then 1801 2 3 until 1900 so uh, in centuries we always go backward okay so this is 19th century so during this century you know nationalism was emerging as a force you know all the people from different different countries by the way we are talking about your so all the people you are they are getting awake they were energetic and they were protesting against all the things well not all the things uh, for the things which were creating the problems and which were not correct okay so they were doing revolutions and after all this sacrifices and struggles the outcome was yes the emergence of the nation state yes so initially there were multinational dynastic empire once again multinational dynastic empires i hope that you can understand this so from this we got the emergence of nation state well in nation state you know all these modern ideas that the central power will have the limit on their power and they will control a fixed territory a defined territory so for example in today we have india so the territory is fixed but in earlier times as we saw in the previous video the those territories were not fixed but after this nation state the territories were fixed and one more thing is that you know what we actually mean by nation what do you think what we actually mean by nation so nation is not just the physical boundary of that area of that land it's not just the physical boundary well nation is made when most of the citizen of that country they begin to develop their common identity right as we discussed in our previous video they begin to develop a common identity and that is what makes a nation you know they begin to feel that hey we belong to each other you know we are in the same team so that is what makes a nation not just the physical bound Okay so that's it for this video guys I hope that all of you understood everything now I'll meet you 
in our next video till then thank you very much for watching